I've run 1353 in the 5K, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you how to actually run a faster 5K based on my experience as an ex D1 athlete and using research based training methods. I'm going to dive deep into some detail here, so if you came for some quick, catchy, cliche, generalized tips, this video is not for you. My goal is to bring you tips and information that you don't already know, so if you really want to get faster, I promise you this is going to work because these are the things that all the successful runners are doing, more or less. First and foremost, improve your running training. Depending on where you are at in terms of your running volume, generally to get faster you should try to push that volume a little higher. There's a good chance there's room for you to increase. You should do so cautiously and slowly. The vast majority of it is going to be slow running, not to be confused with fast running. And a small portion of it will be some form of faster running. There are many different workouts and I'll dive into each one of those kinds of workouts and how your body learns from different paces that you can run. But the frequency of harder runs should really only be up to two times a week. You should also include one longer run, which is about 50% longer than any normal base mileage run. Now, if your mileage seems to be getting too much to handle just running once a day, you may consider throwing in doubles. When it comes to workouts, there's really four different categories of paces you could be running. Easy pace, threshold pace, VO2 max pace, anaerobic. Now, of course, each one of those has a range and there's different ways to run these, but let's break them down. Base training, easy running, whatever you want to call it. This makes up most of your running, and it's different for each person, but ideally it should be conversational and a couple minutes slower per mile than your typical race pace. Base training serves two main purposes. One, it strengthens your heart, and two, it makes it more efficient at using the oxygen that you breathe in with your running muscles. Now it's really easy to recover from easy mileage, so you can get away with running every day, twice a day, stacking the miles up doing running like this, and it's only gonna make you stronger and improve your running, as long as you can recover from it. And that's really why this takes up the bulk of your training. The next one is threshold pace. Threshold is referred to as a lactate threshold. No, this has nothing to do with how much milk you can consume or produce. Threshold pace, it's the threshold at which your body is able to flush out the lactic buildup in your legs as fast as it is being produced. And the way to improve the pace associated with your lactate threshold is by spending time running at your lactate threshold or faster. And the two primary workouts that you would consider to improve your lactate threshold are tempo runs, also known as threshold runs, and cruise intervals. A tempo run is typically one continuous sustained effort, 15 to 30 minutes or so, running just right at your threshold pace. And a cruise interval is repeats, except you have a short recovery and you're running a little faster than your, your tempo or threshold run pace. Now, if you're curious what your threshold pace is and you don't know how to find it, the basic rule of thumb that I use is take your best 5K time or what you think you could run a good 5K in right now under good conditions, take your pace per mile and add 30 seconds to it. And for all you kilometer people, take your kilometer pace for your best 5K and add 20 seconds to it. Your lactate threshold is vitally important for racing 5K. Most people that are racing a 5K are probably running close to their lactate threshold or just faster than it. So by associating a faster pace with your lactate threshold, you are bound to be able to run a 5K significantly faster. The next system you can work is your VO2 max. If you don't know what VO2 max is, it is an oxygen deficit threshold. It's effectively the moment at which you're using all of the oxygen in your running muscles that you're able to intake. So once you go past VO2 max, you enter an anaerobic state, and everybody has some pace of running that is associated with this VO2 max. VO2 max is definitely faster than your lactate threshold. Going past your VO2 max mid 5K can spell disaster. So to improve it, just like your lactate threshold, you need to spend time at your VO2 max. And the best way to do so is to split this up into some repetitions where you can hit your VO2 max, hold it, sustain it for a little bit, take a break and repeat the process. That's really the best way in training you can spend the most amount of time at your VO2 max. For example, a really common workout for VO2 max would be something like four by mile with a few minutes in between each one, maybe three to five minutes between each rep. Just to explain how this works really quick, you're going to start the rep not at VO2 max. It will take about three minutes or so of running to get to your VO2 max where you've reached this 
deficit of oxygen and also your heart rate has hit some steady state. Then you'll spend the last however many minutes left in your rep at your VO2 max. When you take a break, you're going to have your heart rate drop, you're going to be getting extra oxygen, so it's gonna take a couple minutes again in the next rep to get to your VO2 max. And the time that you spend at your VO2 max is only the time you spend after you reached that threshold. So don't get too confused about that. That's why it's vitally important in these workouts to make sure you don't go too fast early so that you can spend the maximum amount of time at your VO2 max. The purpose of the workout is to spend time at your VO2 max. Let me say this again. The purpose of these workouts is to spend time at your VO2 max, not to run the repetitions as fast as possible. Because however fit you are, that day is what matters for your VO2 max. You're not getting faster as the workout progresses. Okay, I've covered lactate threshold and VO2 max. For your harder workouts throughout the week, these should make up the majority of the workouts that you do, likely one kind of each, since both are really important for 5K running. The final thing to do is anaerobic running. The purpose of anaerobic running, increase your body's ability to run in an anaerobic state and also to help improve your running form or your running economy. But I like to fit these in just in some strides at the end of some easy runs. This won't be too much for your training and you can recover from it pretty quickly. Now that was a lot of information and if you didn't understand that before, I hope that this equips you with some resources and some understanding to help you understand why you do the workouts you do. I urge you to listen to your coach and do what your coach is telling you. Hopefully they understand these concepts and are working in these different kinds of systems into your training. Recovery techniques. Remember that you don't get faster while you're running, you get faster while you're recovering from running. So if you don't recover properly, you're not actually going to get the benefits that you need. Number one, most useful way to recover, sleep. Get your sleep. You should be shooting for at least seven hours a night, ideally eight to nine. So if somehow you're short on that, that's going to be 90% of what you need for your recovery gains. In addition to that, you need to be eating well, have your nutrition right. So remember, sleep. And if there's anything you need to take away from this recovery section, sleep. Did I mention sleep? Just, you need sleep. For some of you, it might not be that easy. Like myself, I am a parent and apparently a parent. <laughs> and sometimes you don't have a choice, so you have to do what you can, control what you can control. Beyond just sleep and nutrition, there are more things that you can do to speed up your recovery process. And here are some of the techniques I would suggest. Number one, massage. I like to use a massage gun when I don't have access to a physical therapist or a massage therapist. This will help keep your muscles loose. It's really good for injury prevention, and it also stimulates some blood flow. Another technique I like are compression boots. This is a bit more of an expensive option, but this doubles as a massage and also stimulates blood flow. If you don't have the means for something like this, I would recommend using leg elevation. It's free and you can do it pretty much anywhere. It also stimulates good blood flow to your legs for recovery. One final technique that I like to use is taking Epsom salt baths. Epsom salt is believed to have magnesium that is absorbed through the skin into your muscles and is supposed to help reduce soreness and fatigue after especially longer, harder, more intense efforts. I don't know how true that is, but I tend to feel better after it. And it's nice because you can just use a warm bath and I use about three handfuls of salt. Race selection. This might not be something that you've thought of and it could be a really easy way to drop time in your 5K if you haven't tried this already. You can run a 5K in many different settings. There are cross country races on grass, dirt, gravel, trail, you name it. There are road 5Ks and there are track 5Ks. And in order of fast to slow, track is the fastest, road is the next fastest, especially a flat course, and cross country is the slowest place to run a 5K unless the course is short. So if you have never tried running a track 5K or you've never tried running a road 5K, I would suggest maybe you try running the distance on a different surface. You might surprise yourself with how fast you really are. In addition to the terrain you're running on, the competition really matters. You want to find a race where you're going to have competition that is similar to your skill level. Frankly, for me to reach a new personal best, I have to fly out to sea level into a race with good competition. Typically a California outdoor track meet is the only way I'm really gonna improve my 5K time at this point. Race prep. 
Leading up to the race, you don't need to be eating a whole lot of normal balanced diet things. You want to eat things that are going to be easy on the stomach and fuel your race. Generally, just good carbohydrates for the couple days leading up to the race. And as you get closer and closer, minimize those meats and vegetables and things that are harder to digest or that would upset your stomach. Also a no-brainer, make sure that you are hydrated for your race. Not just water, also throw in some electrolyte mixes as you're going. You wanna to be topped off in all of those stores. Typically hydration takes several days to make sure that you are truly hydrated. So get that process in several days before race day. Tapering before your race will help you feel extra recovered and ready to run fast on race day. Warm up, warm up properly. So find a routine that works for you. What I like is about 20 minutes of an easy jog, then some dynamic stretches and some strides to warm my body what's coming very soon. Shoe choice. You need to pick a good shoe for what terrain you're running on. If you're on the track, you have the versatility to choose a good spike or a super shoe. On the roads, definitely wear a super shoe. And if you're running cross country, you're gonna wanna wear some spike with spike length um, appropriate for whatever terrain you're going to be running on. The moment you've all been waiting for, race execution. <laughs> you're gonna execute it. Well, you're gonna, you're not gonna get killed. You're gonna, you are gonna kill it. You are gonna execute Okay, that's actually race execution, everybody. <laughs> Pretty much all levels that you might be running at, 5K race pace is gonna be somewhere between VO2 max and lactate threshold. So you need to settle into your pace early. Now, of course, if you're in a race with lots of people, you can get away with a quick surge that's faster than your VO2 max in order to get into a good position. As long as you settle back in the first 30 seconds or so, you should be totally fine. For actual pacing, I believe the best way to run a fast 5K is to run totally even splits until close to the end. Whatever goal time you're trying to run, it's okay to run a little slower than that and then depend on that final kick to catch up to it. You could be riding the line of VO2 max a few times during the race and a big surge or some big move to follow something or to try to make a big push a little too early, you could push beyond that VO2 max threshold. And going anaerobic can be detrimental to your 5K performance. So make slow moves, stay with the consistent pace that you can, that you know is a little slower than your VO2 max and you should be okay to maintain. Something I find really important when actually racing your 5K is finding a group to run with, or at least somebody to run with to key off of. If there is a group that's running a little bit faster than your pace, it might be worth to run with them. And of course, when you're within a couple minutes of the finish, give it everything you have to get that PB. I hope that in this video, I was able to give you lots of tools and equipment to move forward, to pick something that you can do to improve your 5K. Remember that consistency is king. If nothing else, be consistent. Don't skip, that is going to make huge differences. My personal best is 1353. I'm hoping to improve that this year if I can get into a good 5K later on. If you want to follow my journey or see how things go, consider subscribing and I will be sure to update you. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.